Fedt. Okay. Um, so, um, I've done a lot, of, a lot of these talks, and I keep coming back to the product market fit phase. Uh, so, I'm probably going to write a book about that at some point. Uh, so, this is the beginning of that. Um, so, this, I don't have that many slides, because I really just want to focus on just that to make the... <laughs> To make the product market uh, fit, uh, I find that very important. And I'm expanding a little bit this time because in my first company, LanguageWire, I'll go through a case there. Uh, it was actually a product market fit. But with AudioYo, it was more than that. We had to add some services and so on to make the customers getting onboarded in a very, like, far-fresh, yeah, anyway, complicated way. Um, so we had to do much more. The product was perfect. It worked. But nothing happened. I'll get back to uh, how we fix that. Um, so, um, yeah. So, so my, my, my new thing about product market fit is that I normally I would say get five clients. I'm going to say this a lot of times today. So get five clients when you have a good idea. But it's more than that because it's not just about doing five sales, but it's about getting five customers to use your product and get them up and running and see that they are happy with the products. That's important. So this picture is what? What is this? What is that? Five clients. No? <laughs> <laughs> Five very old clients. No, no. This is the Columbus egg, and that's Columbus. And what is the Columbus egg about? The, col the story about Columbus egg is that when this guy found America, he came back and I said, I discovered America. And then people said, that's easy. You took a boat and you went that way. Anyone could do that. And then I said, all right, here's an egg. Make it balance on the table. Just make it balance. And everyone tried, tried to make it balance and they couldn't. Then he took the egg and did like this. And then it could balance. And then they said, no, now it's easy. Yeah, but you didn't know. So my point is that sometimes it's very simple what needs to be done, but you don't know until you find out. And the journey can take years. And when I look at AudioYo today, the, the, the things we know today are like, yeah, of course Google is important, but we didn't think about it two years ago. Now we do. Um, all right, so startup timeline, there's many things to put on to make it simple, you know, get an idea. I hope you already got there, but then get five clients, Get them onboarded, get success with those five clients, and then do it again. Um, you know, can you sell it? Can you onboard them? And can you scale it? And I really hate when people say that, you know, who 10,000 people downloaded our apps. It doesn't mean anything unless they use it. So I would much rather, you know, it's much more interesting to have 100 active, committed, dependent customers of your product, just 100 than having 10,000 downloads. That's easy. It's just commercial, making people buy a product, but do they really use it? Do they drink the tubo beer? No, they don't, but they buy it because of advertisement. So it really is about having happy customers. Okay, so when I started LanguageWire a long time ago, um, we, the first thing we did, and this is just a classic market, you know, product market fit. Uh, and if you heard me speak before, you heard this before, so I'll do it quickly. We thought we we're going to make a marketplace. This is 17 years ago. We thought we we're going to make a marketplace for translations. It seems perfect. You know, you can just take your Word document, upload it to the world of translators, and they can all make a bit like, I'll do it for 100 euro. No, no, I could do it for 50 euro, but I can deliver tonight for 200 euro, or I take you. That, that sounds perfect, and it wasn't. Why? because there are no service. People hate translation, so they don't want to upload a Word document, wait five hours to get three bits, then get back, then choose someone. You always choose the cheapest anyway, and then you have to wait two days before this guy makes the translation. So it seemed perfect. It didn't work. Um, so we had to add service, and that's why we made a product just like we just made the product called direct translation, meaning we will find a guy for you who can make the translation. Now, then we went into the market 
And we f so the, the reason why we made a direct product, meaning we will find you a guy who can translate something into Italian or Spanish. And, and the reason why we did it like that was because we met with advertising agencies back in the days. And they said, well, for Italian, we just go to our pizzeria and he'll fix it, you know, like for Nike, like a small banner or something. You know, there was a lot of banners back then um, with some advertisement, you know. And we just said, all right, so we'll find another guy, but a translator, and he can translate for you. So that's how we did it. Back then, 17 years ago, we went and talked to all the uh, translation agencies back then. And they were like, wait, you, you don't have proofreading? Are you crazy? But we were like, but that's the customers, they want that. I mean, they're using a pizza guy, for Christ, you know, to, to make the translation. We just need to, you know, use a professional one. And it worked, and that's how we started it. But then after a while, there are sometimes the clients will come back and say too many spelling mistakes. And then we gave birth to another product called Full Service, where we will do the translation by the same guy. But then we'll run it by a proofreader and he will do some extra check. And it costs 30 or 40% more to get that product. And, well, I don't know still today, but when I left the company 12 years later, it was 50-50. So 50% 50 of the products were this and 50% that. Of course, if you translate something to the web, you can always change it. But if you print, you know, if you want something translated for a product that you print and put in the store, you can't just change, you know, whatever is ingredients in this product. And it's pretty serious you know, that, that's right. So that's why we, 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 we developed from here. This seems so perfect to a normal translation job, but more direct. And then we had the full service along the way. That was took two years to get to that. And then from there, the company had its product in place. That's pretty simple product market fit where we listen to the customers and we find out, you know, what they want and what they don't want. Uh, and the funny thing is, when I started the, this, we just said, let's make a marketplace. We don't have to do anything, and we just take 1% of whatever billion that comes in. That sounds great. But in reality, we, you know, we ended up taking 50% of every translation job. Otherwise, there's no money in it. So you know, the, the, the business plan I made 18 years ago you know, was way off, way off. Okay. So now I'm doing audio uh, for the last three years, three and a half years. Um, and it's about helping the takeaway uh, get their own app and their own web. So to show you what we do, um, how many in here is buying takeaway at least once a month? At least once a month, you get it delivered or you pick it up yourself, but you don't make the food, you just get it takeaway great um, and then it becomes embarrassing because how many pizzas and so on you're making so maybe not maybe this is not a good idea but anyway so a lot of people have takeaway uh, and let me ask you this if you do takeaway do you have like a one or two regular places you go to so if you do takeaway do you have one or two regular places you go to not one of you oh, that's good otherwise my business is dead so <laughs> <laughs> so Audio is about uh, the fact that people go back to the same place every time they need their pizza and so on. So me at my house, you know, I ask my kids and my wife, what do you want for dinner? They say pizza. And I don't ask them, all right, so where should we get it from? Because it's always the local pizzeria we get it from. And when this case really took off was when I realized from some data I got from Just Eat is that even when you order from Just Eat, 80% of those orders are returning customers. So even the people who go to Vault or Deliveroo or Uber Eats or Just Eat, they order the same every time. And that is crazy because e-commerce is all about buying a lead from Google, but then you keep it, right? So when I buy a t-shirt, I may not know about Boost. So I go to Google, I search, I find Boost or Zalando and I buy my t-shirt. After that, Salanto don't tell me, uh, thank you for buying a t-shirt, go back to Google and see if you can find us again. They will never do that, right? So that's e-commerce guys. So they, of course they will bombard me with SMSs and email until I die. But those poor takeaway guys, they keep on paying 20% to just eat for every order. And we wanna change that. So that's why we're helping the small takeaways get their own app, their own web, simple as that. So. Yeah.
that's what I just said. And of course, uh, you know, the Domino's and the McDonald's and all those guys are, you know, doing this. If you try to order from Domino's, you will realize they do the same as Boost, of course. They remind you that you are probably hungry again tomorrow and you should probably get a pizza more. That's actually a beautiful thing about takeaways, that you're hungry every day, so we can do a lot of engagement. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. Okay. So, and we made it free. So, to be really aggressive, we made it free. So, you know, we make you a website and we make you an app and it's free to get. The problem with that is who can say no to that? Nobody, right? So I found out that I can sell this so easy. Hey, you want a free app and a free website? Yeah, I love that. All right, cool. Here's a client. It's just too easy. So, but I, you know, I didn't know. So I just hired 10 sales guys and eight in UK. Well, eight of those was in UK and just let's go. And they brought in a lot of sales. This was two years ago. It just came in a lot of sales. And we are so happy. We did 200 sales a month, uh, and it's great. And then, one, then um, half a year later, uh, we discovered that there's nothing wrong with the product, but only half of our customers, of 40%, went up and flying. And the other half didn't. And why? Because we gave them a website, and we gave them an app, and we said bye-bye. And then nobody knew. So if I changed my phone number and I didn't tell anyone, no one would know, right? So here's a client, um, and before we start helping him, so if you go to Google and you search for this place in Hellerup, and you search to tuna pizzeria because you know what you want, that's just eat, that's just eat, even that one, that's just eat, that is just eat, <laughs> this is another just eat called meal for you, and if you click there, that's Just Eat. So Just Eat, you know, they got a head start of 70 years before us, so they're, you know, they're pretty good at that. They have taken over Google, you know. Let's steal my picture though, but everything else, everything else is just Just Eat everywhere. So this poor guy, no matter where you go on the internet, you go through Just Eat and they pay 20% every time, even though you went to Google and didn't search for Hey, I want pizza and I'm in Hello. I can understand that part. But if you go and search Situna Pizzeria because you want his pizzeria or his pizza, then you end up at Just Eat anyway. And that's crazy and that's what we help. But so, so this is the problem. We gave this guy, you know, here's an app, here's a web, and he's like, whoo, you know, it's cool. And he can go to his kids and say, could you search for daddy's, you know, in, in the app store? And oh, that's my app, you know, that, that's cool. But nobody knew. And those half of our clients back then that did go up was the ones who like made flyers and you know actually told these clients, I got an app, you know, and oh cool, and could you download while you're waiting for your pizza? That worked. But we couldn't rely our business on that because some of them forgot about it or just knew how to make a pizza and that's it, you know, so we had to do more. And what we do now is that we change this. I didn't have a picture of that, but we changed this. So we needed to add more and not just giving them a website and an app, but we needed to add more. That means that we take over Google for him and we do so much more to get in contact with his end users. And thank God it's a super, and for us, this business is super local. You know, whoever buys, I mean, you never, you don't even know Satune unless you buy, you, you live two kilometers from this guy. Otherwise you don't know him and you shouldn't go there. It's just a normal pizza, right? So it's very local. And that's why you can do flyers just around in Poscasa and so on. It's so easy, right? So it's actually a very simple game because it's super local and it doesn't have to be online. We help him a lot online, but there's much you can do offline. So all this we have realized. And today we got more than 90% of our customers that we give a map and a website, they actually start going up. Another thing we've done is to be much more selective about who we want as a customer because our, our sales guys, they were, you know, on a goal, you should do, you know, that amount of sales every month. It's like, all right. And then it would just went to a kiosk and said, hey, you're selling Coca-Cola and so on, but you would, would you like an app? Yeah, I love an app. Cool, you know, one more sale. Because there are no control in the beginning. But today we have very strict rules of what we sell to, and we know the ones we sell to now have a pattern that we know, you know, they will fly. One way to look at it is that if nobody searches for the restaurant on Google, they're not worth it. Nobody knows them. 
I, th I heard a number on Google which is surprising, but then again not, that half of the searches on Google are you search for something you already know. You know, back in the days, Yahoo, like, who was Napoleon? You know, that's, that's a search. But today it's all about where is NetScale and where is Founders House and you, you search for something specific because Google is also now your yellow pages, right? Who uses crack anymore in Denmark? And remember, I mean, you know, and, yellow, and even yellow pages, who uses that anymore? You go to Google and you get a, you know, the road and you get the phone number and you see the opening hours, you see everything. Google is everything. So the funny thing is that people go to Google and they search for their pizzeria, which is why we can catch them right there. Anyway, so, so to sum up this, that it's the, it's the product, you know, the product market fit phase, you know, fix the product, you can sell it and they, you know, it, it works. But sometimes it needs more than just the product because our product has been working for two years, like perfect. But it's more than that because we had to look at what happens when our customers start using the product or actually not using it. And then his customers, how do they get in contact with this product? So we had to help him even more get in contact with his end users to activate them and make sure they knew about it. I think that was it actually, very short to the point. Um, I love to help. Um, I'm not gonna stick around for that much uh, long here, but you know my name and uh, contact me if you want a morning meeting at some point. Uh, I can't do every morning, but you know, I love to help. I think it's important you get a push in the right direction and get the truth so you don't waste your time on something that, you know, or walking in the wrong way. Um, to me, it's taking many years to find the right way of doing things. In the beginning, you make big changes, and then later on, you make small changes, and then you got it. All right, thank you.